Hello and welcome to Science with Ali. So, con a continuation of the topic Rising Public Awareness Fight Against the Polio. So, it is a long video and I have divided this video into two parts. The first part is on the history of polio. How old is polio? Actually, John Enders et al. Could you pattern the sun and attempt to switch to oral? These are some of the topics in part one. Well, in second part, I will discuss about preparing the polio vaccine. So let's come toward the first top part. How old is the disease actually? So if you look at the picture, it is one of the uh, men of the Achean dynasty of the Egyptian Ramesar period, which was from 1403 to 1365 BC. And we have found a stele, a stone slab from the Ramesar period which lies at the Carlsberg Museum in Copenhagen. What interesting is in this cell is that one of the leg is um, polio affected. Now the statue shows that it is a polio affected patient. So it means that at that time they know about the polio disease. Uh, they have information of the disease was prevalent or present at that time. So how old was the disease? The stone slab is actually dedicated to the Egyptian goddess of fertility who was named as Esterat. And this statue of Esterat was uh, and, and the statue and that stone slab that stone slab was uncovered in 1890 and after that it was carried to the Carlsberg Museum to the Copenhagen. So another picture here is that of the Egyptian goddess of fertility Esterat who is lying at the Seville Museum in Spain. So it was the first reported. Uh, why it is so important? It was important because it was the first case of polio. So glimpses of the polio disease, as I discussed in the earlier video, is that the in the Renaissance, artist Peter Bruegel painted uh, beggars or the cripples in 1568, and it was piled on panel painting, which shows the condition or the situation of the polio patient. We see they are using the crutches made from wood at that the first medical case medically documented case was that by the michael underwood michael underwood was a london based british doctor who first described the polio disease and as a disease it was recognized by journal biologist jacob Heine in 1840. unfortunately uh, there is no picture of michael underwood but I have found one picture of Jacob Heine from the Common. He was born in 1800 and died in 1879. So, how did he describe Michael Underwood? Described the disease. Uh, Michael Underwood, a British physician, defined polio, which was named not named at that time. Michael Underwood, British physician, defined polio, a debilitating condition of the lower extremity. Like it affects the lower region, it affects the limbs. So then, can, then Jacob Heine, along with the Madden, Carl Oscar Madden, uh, there's a picture of Carl Oscar Madden in 1840, and they jointly named it as Heine Madden disease. And they named this disease when the first sporadic cases of polio appeared in Sweden. So Dr. then Dr. Ivor Whitman published a report suggesting that polio was contagious and it seems that it involves spines. In 1907, he was the first person to define, to classify the polio and uh, name use the word about him. So uh, the, in, in 1908, the Carl Landsteiner and Erwin Popper announced the disease was viral and it was named as the polio disease. So. They made this discovery when they took the fluid from the spinal cord, I mean cerebrospinal fluid, and they passed this fluid from the bacterial filter. And they then inserted the fluid into the spines of monkeys. When we, we are there, who then developed the disease and as viral particles were smaller, they easily passed through the bacterial filter. That's why they concluded that it is a viral disease. So in 19th century began the advent or the dawn of the archaeological discoveries. So in 19th century, where a number of archaeological discovery sites were uncovered globally, the Flinders Petrie found a mummy of Pharaoh Menifta Septa in the modern day Thebes. No, it is mod not modern, it is an old city in the Thebes. And here 
he found in this in this city the Flinders Peter found the statue of the Pharaoh Menifta and the valley of the king and this Pharaoh um, ruled from 1197 to 1191 I mean for six years he ruled Egypt and 94 an outbreak of 32 132 cases was recorded in Vermont in USA and then in 1950 another case has become more and more and more 25 out of 100,000 began to report so the cases were usually reported school children age children so it showed that it is a viral disease and it affects children a major outbreak in New York in 1916 killed over 2,000 people while the worst outbreak reported in the US killing more than 3,000 people so uh, the deformed limbs was one of the major sign of polio disease and it necessitates the use of leg braces, crutches or wheelchairs or other uh, or some in some severe cases the breathing aids were required. For example, the breathing cases, the breathing machines are we can say artificial lung machines are like I will show it in a picture it shows um, was first used in Sweden and it was the beginning of the emergency system of the intensive care units in Sweden. So it spread in globally. Today, still today, we have one case of a polio uh, patient in the United States who is still breathing with the help of lung machine for 32 years. And it is a leg brace which is used for aiding in uh, walking. So how did it become a savage pandemic? By, by mid-1950, the polio had become a pandemic affecting more than 500,000 people per year. So culturing culturing a uh, polio virus in human tissue so the next part of our story was the um, john ender thomas Wheeler, and the frederick robbins of the boston children's hospital achieved a breakthrough in 1949 when they successfully cultured the polio virus in human tissue so each of the three now each of the three indigenous types of the polio virus uh, has been propagated in the suspended cell cultures of human embryon embryonic stem cells uh, the muscle cell are in the culture of human embryonic brain tissues are in the culture of mature human kidney tissues so john salk md in an early 1950s john salk developed first ipv and the yes, recipients of this vaccine was his own family in 1953 and this story will be repeated again by uh, dr sabi when he tries to um, approve his vaccine he will have to test his uh, it is not an essential criteria, but he had to. Uh, after one year, uh, 1.6 million children in the United States, Finland, Canada were vaccinated again vaccine. And 12th April 1955 was the, the day when the first final reports of the IPV were brought and the IPV was approved on the same day. So look at the cases. In 1957, the cases were 58,000 to uh, 58, 56 to 58,000. And in 1961, after just after four years, the cases fall to 161 cases. So, SAC was dedicated to ensuring fair access to his vaccine and recognition. Recognized that elimination attempts would be fruitless without universal low or no cost inoculation. So, the five pharmaceutical companies were licensed to manufacture IPV, and SAC received no compensation for that. These were Illy, Illy, Perkidivis, White, Pitman Moore, and Cutter Pharmaceutical. Cutter pharmaceuticals. So the three companies are present today. Illini, Perky Davis, and Wait are present, and Pittman Moore and Cutters have stopped producing. So when when someone asked from him in 1955 in an interview that would you patent uh, the mm, this vaccine, he said, Well, the people, I would say there is no patent. Would you patent the sun? So that became the tagline for our story. So I tend to switch to the oral route and they that was made possible by Abraham Sebastian, who would later become Albert Sabin in 1906. He was born in Russia, in Poland in 1906, and uh, who died in 1993. So, Sabin was also a physician and a microbiologist, and he invented a second type of polio vaccine, the oral polio vaccine. It was a live attenuated vaccine. It, it used a weak virus, and it could be administered as a orally a drop or as a sugar cube. So, when the SARC vaccination, widely used by the 1950s, late 50s, enthusiasm in testing this new type of vaccine was limited. So, the healthy 
Keprowski came to help the Dr. Sabin, who was also a Polish virologist, and he tested the uh, OPV in Democratic Republic of Congo in Africa in the 1950s. Albert Sabin, most trials were conducted in Russia. Just I show the picture in the first video. After he tested the vaccine on his family doctor, like Dr. John Salk in 1956. So, meanwhile, the Salk vaccine were under trial in Russia under the supervision of Chomikov. Michael Petrovich Chomikov uh, was also a physician. In 1958, the number of vaccination was 20,000 children, which rose to one after one year, the number rose to 10 million. So uh, then uh, Cuba, which was a hardcore anti-American state, conducted the national immunization effect in 1962. OPV has the H over IPV because it protects the child-to-child -child transmission of polio virus. And then came our big savior of the day, who was the Rotary International. The Rotary International worked painstakingly that keeping one one vision that no children, no child would ever again get to seven in life thank you so much get in life and that's how they initiated the global polio or the polio global eradication initiative and the global polio eradication initiative was started by the world health organization in the next video in the next part of this video i'll talk about the preparation of the polio virus